All right, guys, how about an unlikely comparison? Uh, unrealistic comparison? Listen, I've done that many times. I did an Orange Monster versus a Tudor. I did an Orange Monster versus a Seamaster. I'll probably do the Orange Monster against the Brightling. So at some point, I just like to do these weird comparisons. So, of course, some of my viewers, and I'm sorry I forget who mentioned to do this, but they knew that I had the Black Bay 41, and they said, Rob, would you please bring in Visitor Linden and do a side-by-side -side comparison? Well, they sent me one, and uh, again, spoiler alert, I've mentioned this in some other videos, I think, but I actually bought the white dial Visitor, which I'll have later this week. But for that viewer and whoever else maybe can get something from this video, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison right now. So, Let's just talk about the elephant in the room. You're talking about massive price disparity here. You're looking at a $3,000, we're talking retail prices. You're looking at a $3,000 Tudor Black Bay 41 with the ETA movement. And then on your right, you're looking at the Visitor Linden. This is the black dial. These are basically like 580. You're going to you're going to be like $600 into it. So, you have uh $2400 left over if you choose this versus this. Now, why would you choose this over this? Well, maybe because you don't have the extra $2,400. A lot of us don't. $3,000 is a lot of money for a watch. Heck, $600 is a lot of money for a watch. So let's just break it down real quick. Uh, we're gonna talk about measurements. I didn't write anything down, so we're just gonna, we're gonna do it right now. So you're looking at a 41 millimeter watch. You're looking at a lug to lug of basically 50. You're looking at a thickness of, say, 11. You have a 22 millimeter lug width, and you have a nice oversized crown at 8 millimeter. So that is super cool. Obviously, you have the brand heritage and all that stuff. You have a phenomenal bracelet, nice clasp, all of that. Um, the Tudor Black Bay 41 is actually probably one of my favorite watches, if we're, if we're being straight up. Um, I've toyed around with trying different Tudor watches, and honestly, I keep coming back to the Tudor Black Bay 41. All right, now let's look at the visitor specs. Now, the Tudor does have the, it has a regulated ETA 2824 modified, so there is a, no date in it. Um, and then the visitor is 39 millimeter. It's going to look very close to the 41, though, just because of the dial size. A 48 and a half lug to lug. The thickness also going to be pretty thin at about 10 and a half. That's because they're using the uh, Miota 9015, I think, because this is a date model. And then the lug width is 20 millimeter. This also has an oversized crown at 7 millimeter. So spec-wise, obviously, this is a little bit smaller in all dimensions. And, of course, it has an inferior, well, technically, I guess, for most of us, as far as what we consider inferior movements, it's going to be inferior compared to the ETA movement, although it's kind of meant to compete with it. So it also sweeps at four hertz. It hand winds and hacks. You're going to have a non-screw down crown on the visitor. I forget what the water resistance is on this thing. I think it's, uh, does it say it on the back? We'll have to put a link in the description, but it might be 100 meter. If not, it's probably 50, whereas on the Tudor, you're going to be 150. I can confirm that this thing does just fine. I haven't swam with it, but um, I did a month-long wear of this thing where I just wore this day and night. I never really took it off, um, and I even showered with it. And I know a lot of people are like, don't do that, don't do that, but it performed like a champ. It basically just kept it clean, just like it keeps me clean. Now, would I do that with the visitor? No, I wouldn't. Not without a screw-down crown. I just peace of mind. It would probably do fine, but also there's no bracelet with a visitor. It does have really nice leather straps and nice matching hardware to match the case, but you're stuck with, you know, either aftermarket straps or something like that. There might be a bracelet for these. I can't remember. I'll have to look on their website. But you have, much like the Tudor, you have clean, classic, unique look to it. Um, although it, the visitors may be a little more bold, obviously, snowflake hands, a lot of people hate them or love them. You're definitely going to be in a camp, hate it or love it, with the visitor design. The way the indices are, the way the case is, the way the uh, calligraphy type handset is. Um, I think they're awesome, but I also really love snowflake hands. So uh, I think they're both great watches. 
And uh, I think this is a fun little comparison. So let's do some close-ups. We'll do some wrist shots, and then we'll do a loom shot. Uh, the Visitor's got a couple tricks up its sleeve when it comes to loom, and I do intend to do a full video on this watch, as well as my white one when I get it in. So you have excellent brushing on this, nice polished surfaces, minus all my finger smudging. Nice display case back. Just showing a fairly not decorated Miyota movement, but custom visitor rotor. Really nice leather straps that also taper down and a nice oversized signed crown. So very cool fun watch. Also, you get the date on this. You're not going to get the date with the Tudor Black Bay. So, but if we look at the Tudor, obviously this one has a beautiful blue dial. There's a black dial variant as well. But that's the only two colorways you have with this one, whereas the Visitor, I think you have four different colorways. Uh, you got the rose on the crown, and you got the shield on the dial, the uh, rotor self-winding, good clean classic line, slab side on this, really nice bracelet. The bracelet is top-notch on this. You can see I've worn this plenty. There's some scratches there. But the bracelet is just top-notch. And then you have the ceramic ball bearings or detents or whatever for the clasp. All right, well, let's pop these both on wrist. I'm sure you guys have seen the Black Bay on my seven and a quarter inch wrist many times. Absolutely love this watch. Super easy to wear. I mean, this, if you're looking for a stretch goal, and I know this might be a, um, a grail piece for a lot of people, being that it has a, a heftier price tag on it at $3,000, but it has a nice taper to the bracelet and everything. Um, you know, this is something you can live with every day. You could wear this watch every day day this is no problem i don't know that i feel the same when it comes to the visitor i don't know if you could wear this i mean you can i mean heck you can wear any watch every day um, i just think the tutor is going to be more versatile whereas the visitor is probably going to be you know if you're only doing like three watches i don't know if visitor is going to be one of them i think you're going to have a, maybe a little bit bigger collection if you're going to jump into some of the visitor watches which i think you should definitely check out if you're even remotely interested in these, I can easily say this one, this model, the Visitor Linden, is probably one of the most sporty, most easy to pull off wear, and might actually become a conversation piece just because of its unique look. It might draw somebody in, and they might go, wow, that's a cool watch. I've never you know, seen anything like that. So, all right, let's kill the lights. Let's check the loom on this and the Tudor. So you can get a look at that. I am going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to blast them so we can get the full effect. Now the Tudor lasts all night. Super easy to read. Uh, easier to read than my Seamaster when I did the, um, the month-long watch fast. But you can see you have the green loom on the Tudor. So I'm guessing some sort of C3 or whatever they use. But on the Visitor, it is fully done in BGW-9. So no loom on the second hand, but all of the indices, plenty of real estate, awesome real estate on the hour and minute hand, easy to determine which one's which. Um, I don't know if it's showing up, but the date wheel's actually loomed, and then the brand visitor is actually loomed on there too. A little hard to pick up on camera, but I assure you it's there. So anyway, guys, I had fun doing this weird comparison. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. Let me know in the comments. I'll see you on the next vid.